What's up, everybody? It's boy Bell for our closet review. I hope everybody had a great Halloween. I did as well, including the premiere of my Halloween special. And it was a, a total of success. But now it's time back to the review. Now I'm going to talk about my thoughts on a classic movie. Have you ever heard of? From the director of John Carpenter. It's The Fog. Released in 1980 and is a total classic. What's the words? Stay away from the fog. But before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, whatever you do, do not enter the fog. There's something in there. It might be the last time we ever see each other again. But yeah. The fog? Damn. Here's a funny story. The first time I saw the fog was actually the remake, and... I don't know what to say. I've never seen the original. When I saw the original, I was like, ooh, it's getting good. I thought I read it that the remake sucked. Like, wow. It did tank bad. <laughs> but yeah. The original was directed by John Carpenter. And this one's like a proposition because. This thing. This was made before Halloween 2, which was released in 1981. And. The producer who produced Halloween wanted to make Halloween 2, but <laughs> he actually sued both John Carpenter and the company who wants to do The Fog. And they decided to make it packed so they can do both The Fog and Halloween 2. It stars Andrean Barbui, I think, as Stevie Wayne, the DJ of The Lighthouse. We also had Jamie Lee Curtis, Hal Hallbrook. And including her mother, Janet Lee. If you don't remember that name, she was the famed actress from the movie Psycho, aka the first lead actress to get killed off on screen. Yeah, by mother. <laughs> Playing, I forgot her, the character she played, but yeah, she also has a secretary. And we have Hal Hallbrook playing Father Malone. If you don't remember him, he also appeared along with. Andrea in Creep Show as the husband husband and wife duel and the segment The Crate where Hallbrook played a university teacher while Andrea played his drunken crazed wife who gets killed by Fluffy in the end. <laughs> but yeah, that's good. And also Junker makes a cameo in this as well, playing a character named Bennett helping Father Malone in the church. So yeah, we get an opening scene where we see a bunch of kids in a campfire listening to an old sea captain, played by John Houseman, giving the opening. And this is before Ghost Story, I tell ya. Because Ghost Story was released in 1981, so this was before this movie was made, so... Tell them the story of the anniversary. It says, one hour before the anniversary... One hundred years ago, on these waters, a clipper, the Elizabeth Dane, sank down these waters when a mysterious fog rolled in. Well, as we all know, the story of the Elizabeth Dane was a famous clipper ship which mysteriously sank when a fog rolled in, which no one knows why. Which, when the bell... Hold it. Sorry. Ugh, hate allergies. Meanwhile, after when fishing telling the story, the the clock in the town starts twelve. Is it twelve o'clock? The first of April. Which we get a mate to as the slowly rises above his head, we get to see the view of the of An Antonio Bay. In the title card, The Fog. First, we meet a couple of our characters. We meet... Shit, I forgot. His, his game, William Castle, I think. Picking up a hitchhiker, played by... Jamie Lee Curtis. Of course, strange things are happening. Like, everything's going whack. Like, mysterious... Sh vibrations. Even the grocery store where... A little gas station shop. Things start to shake. Everything... I guess... All cards going off, everything. And also, 
C.B. Wayne, played by Andrew, is in the, on the air, in a lighthouse, in all places. Wait for the weather, Dan the Weatherman, reporting on mysterious fog showing up, which, of course, there's a, fish, a fishing crew aboard a ship called the Seagrass, hearing this, and, of course, they countered the fog. Which, of course, they're somehow the fog guy said their motor and kaput. The motor is dead. Soon they are trying to find what's going on. As they, when they get on deck, that's when they see a mysterious ghost ship. There's like a clipper ship. And guess what it was? That's the ship they see the, the Elizabeth Dane. And soon, when they both, the ship disappeared, they hear some splashes. That's when they know something in the fog, like people in the fog. And soon, one by one, they're killed off. And the last one, that is trying to get contact, gets killed by getting his eyes gouged. Yet. The next morning, let's say Williams waits for a ship because that was his boat, so they go out and find the seagrass. Back at, at land, we meet Andy. CB's son, who find a mysterious wood board that dons the name Elizabeth Dane, which of course, is like I think she's a single mother, I think, and we see him bring it to her while she was asleep. <laughs> of course, then they're back in the church. I forgot to mention it because during the night, follow them all. Was actually talking to Bennett, played by John Carpenter, but was uncredited in the credits. About getting paid, of course. Farm tells to come back tomorrow. Of course, he accidentally wanted to join for some wine, which, no. Then somehow a brick fell off from the wall, which spooked him, turned off the radio to turn on. And he found a mysterious. It was like he found something, a bug that went to his. Is this ancestor who was a priest as well? Turns out, reveals the truth of the history of the town wherein I forgot Jan Janet Lee's character, could have secretary, her secretary, arrived at the church because they do doing an, an, a blessing for the 100th anniversary, which of course Father Malone does not want to do because he found out the truth through a diary belonging to his ancestor that. He reads that their ancestors were conspirators because they they sunk the the le the clipper ship the Limadane, belonging to Blake, a rich man who has who and a lot of others who are are a leprosy people. Which, if you don't know what leprosy is, it's like that it's a type of disease that makes you like disfigure, like a rotting corpse. You know, like you're seeing Kingdom Kingdom Come. With Orlando Bloom, the the Leopard King, yeah, that's what it is. They learn of the f false fire when they put the fire out. His ship ran into rocks, sank, it killing everybody, and still in their goal because they don't want a leper colony near where they are. So they killed them off. Anywho, <sniffs> I'll say he refuses to do the blessing because, first of all, who was the blessing that honors murderers? <sniffs> A lot, actually. But soon, back at the the waters, looking for the seagrass. Looking for the seagrass. They found it and they know what's going on. Everything was wet. Like it fell under water. And soon they're looking trying to find them. And as they are looking down below, Jay got a little tired. <laughs> there was a one jump scare where it's a locker just popped open on his own and nothing happened until a body falls on top of her with screams with his eyes gouged out. 
two, we're back in land. Stevie is driving, taking a long way to get to the lighthouse that she bought. Her radio station is actually a lighthouse. And a long drive, I tell you what. They actually have a take. And it's a steep. What you write is the lighthouse. This is like it's just like in the bottom, and it's like a long staircase that leads down to the lighthouse. So they she arrives at the lighthouse. She goes to her, her radio station in the, in the middle of the I think it's like the, where the, the conning tower the light is. I think. What? <laughs> Damn allergies. Okay, I was saying. When she put the the nameplate of the other day on her desk, it starts to get wet until it bursts into flames. When she knows it and try to the fire, nothing happened. It's like it never got scorched. Soon she called home, telling her son not to find anything. Fine, of course, yeah. During the night, which. Again, it happened this time, but way worse. That's when things started to get really freaky. Or say, fucky. Excuse me. After that, that's when the fog rolls in. And I like the effects on the fog here because people say, wait, was this digital? No, was that? that was done by fog machines or dry eyes. And they record it by recording the fog in the dry eyes in a black screen and create the illusion. So, when well, you have scenes that fall with the fogs with that weird formation, plus they get out of lights in the fog to give it like, make the fog an actual character, give it like it's alive. That's when we get to see our. The crew of the young day crew of the Elizabeth Dane when the ship arrives at port where Father Malone sees them. And oh boy, they see the clipper ship. That's when hell breaks loose. Back at Weather Dan's place, he hears a knock on the door. Boom, he gets killed by the ghost pirates. By the ghost crew. But Steve Way knew there's a fog rolling. And Trey tried to warn everybody, but. When the power was knocked out by the by the crew, by the fog, of course. That's when she tried to contact her son, but he can't. Of course, she uses the radio to tell everybody to go check her son, including her. The sea's all right. Soon, the other two, by the way, I forgot their names, but I know it's Jamie Lee Curtis and the other guy. William Castle. Have for where Wayne's son lives. Soon, that's when everything started to go weird. The fog rolls in, literally. And this, and the fog has to reach where the lighthouse is. And oh boy, the ghosts are bus bussy trying to bust through the, do the door. Of the lighthouse with force. Back at her home, where Annie and the babysitter is. That's when the fog guard arrived, as the gr the old lady watching Andy tells her to go to his room. That's when the the, the sails grabbed her when she opens the door and kills her. Like, are you kidding me? Not even an old lady is safe from these from the from the dead. So, the other two arrived. They managed to save Andy before the, the ghost sail has arrived, which... Oh, boy. We have to use what they look like when they arrive at Stevie's lighthouse. They managed to get in. Stevie climbs on top of the lighthouse, which, of course... This is a tricky part, because... She's, right, she's in the middle of a lighthouse. You have nowhere to escape. Of course, the remaining three, which is Annie and the other two, head for the church, which, of course, the other, the other one to arrive at the church, which, of course, they found Pablo Malone, which they barricade the, the entrance of the church, which, of course, that's when they start digging the wall, 
where they found the, where he found the book. It turns out there's something else in there, a golden cross made from the stolen gold by that his ancestor made. Which of course he has a choice because hey, this is not this is their gold and it was forged into a cross of holiness, which is now tainted. Soon, that's when Father Malone walks outside. The big guilt sacrifice. That's when he, when he walks out of the cross. He sees Blake and his crew right there waiting. Glowing red eyes and the fog flowing inside. You can see the fog right there. Bright lights and glowing like it's alive. And we see Blake right there. Pulling his sword out. Of course, Malone tells him, I got your gold here. You want it? You can have it. That's when Blake grabs the cross and somehow starts to glow. The cross starts to glow and glow and somehow starts to vibrate until, well, they get back to Stevie Wayne. She's surrounded by dead. She managed to kick one of them until we see a glimpse of the the ghost sailor as his zombies covered in seaweed, worms coming out of the face. It's like, oh boy, greenish. As she's about to get killed, all the ghosts disappear right there, and the fog slowly descends back to the sea. And everybody walked outside saying, like, it's over? Which everybody looked, it's over. See, we ain't safe. Oh, you're wondering what happened to Dan? He got killed. For being stupid. Of course, after the earthquake was over, that's when Malone knows it's something. He walks back in the church, and guess what he sees? Blake's crew back there again, and Blake popped right behind him and kills him on the spot. And that was it. And that was The Fog. Released in 1980, and it's a classic because... It's to tell you more than what you know. And it's not just the people, it's The Fog. The Fog is actually a main character because you see... The way they play with the effects for the fog, like it was alive, that was actually pretty cool. The way they do the effects and the way they use lights, cool the the way. And here's the thing: how they managed to use the they retract the fog by returning back to the sea. They just did it in reverse, like you forward reverse. Behind a black screen, that's how they did it. But yeah, let me know what you think of the of the of John Carpenter's The Fog. Did you like it? Did you see it when it was on TV? Because if you try to see if it came in the eighties, damn, you're old. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you think of of The Fog. Did you like it? Did you see it on television? Did you own the movie? And I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody. If you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like this video, and peace.